I don't know if you all familiar with the breakdowns. The breakdowns are when they send a um, description of the role that they're looking for. And the role that they had me for was uh, for Ken K. First of all, the first was Ken K was originally white. And so they decided to look at black actors, and so they wanted an actor with a slim body build, you know, really nice body. That wasn't happening with me, you know, uh, so. And so my agent set me up for an audition, and I had to uh, go to court that day, and then go to audition. It was raining, and I did not have a car. And so I was not in the best mood. So I went to court, which was on the other side of town, and audition was back on the other side of town, and I stayed over there. So all I wanted to do was get my black Assateria home. There's a kid here, so I can't say too much. So Assateria is a big word. Y'all know y'all gonna be using it. Get your Assateria in the house. But, so, <laughs> yeah, so, um, when I went to the audition, I had to catch three buses to get there. And I just wanted to go up, do the audition, come back, and get on the bus, and get home before it get dark. But when I went up there, they was like about an hour late. And all these guys was in the lobby with their bill, you know, these, these white you know, shirts on, and I was looking at, you know, the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know. So I had an attitude. So by the time I got in there, the attitude was at full force. And the director was talking with me and I said, a, a black guy wouldn't say this, Chineke, <laughs> that's short for shit, but uh, Chineke. <laughs> see, see what happened when, okay. So um, he told me, just say what you wanna say and just be what you wanna And I said, well, I don't really wanna be here. And he said, yeah, oh, I love that, I love that. And I'm looking at him, this is a damn fool. <laughs> you know, so I did the audition. He said, thank you. And I cussed him out. And by the time I got home, this was back when we didn't have the cell phone. There was no, no big old... Uh, Freddie, <laughs> they the clothes he wear. But in, anyway, you know, <laughs> So by the time we got there, you know, my machine, you know, that was back when the machine looked like suitcases. It was a big suitcases. And my agent had called 30 something times. He kept saying, Ken, Ken, get here. I knew he was mad, so I finally picked up the phone. He said, what the hell did you do? And I said, well, Dave, I told you I didn't want to go. And he said, they loved you. So that's how I got the role for my first horror film. Needless to say, it didn't work on the next audition. The attitude did not work. Okay. So that's how I got it. Did I answer your question? I know you didn't want this big, long encyclopedia uh, speechologist, but yeah. Any more questions? favorite scene, actually my favorite scene was two of them. It was when, um, uh oh what? Oh, he's, yeah. See, let me tell you, okay, my favorite film um, scene was two of them. One was when we was in the hospital room where they took me out where I said, oh yeah, man, it's my dick is killing me. That was my favorite scene because we was all there together. The other one was when I was in the um, room saying, "Do you go to sleep? No more, no more. Ain't going to sleep." That was uh, my favorite. Yeah. Another favorite where I cried was the part four when I said, "I see you in hell." After the scene, we was crying. And Robert England reached over and said, Ken, 
it's going to be okay. You know, I know you hate to see this uh, movie go. And I said, I ain't crying about this movie, uh, Robert. I'm crying because this is my last check. <laughs> that answered the question? <laughs> and before we go, for those who don't know, I leave it too. So if you want to come by there and get something from me, please do, because all my stuff go to charity. I have an organization called the Giving Back Cooperation, which I started in 1997. It's a 501c3. Does anybody know about 501c3? You have to last about five years where they give you the stamp. So I've been here for 20 something years and I I put more than 5,000 surprises uh, classroom for teachers. I put more than 660 kids through college and I sent about 300 kids to camp every summer. And that's, I do that because I promised God that if he got me to a certain level I will always give back to the things that I did not have. There was a couple of times I remember seeing a bus drive away during the summer with kids going to camp because I couldn't afford to go. So now I make sure I send kids to camp all over the United States, not just LA. And I could not afford my books in, in um, college. And um, so I make sure I pay for my books. One story I want to tell is because when I was in high school, I was a kind of bad kid, you know, and it used to be this lady, old lady, about 80 something years old, walking with a cane every morning with a fruit jar begging for money, knocking on the door. So me and a couple of friends used to pick at her, call her names. Because we got home from school, she was still begging. She would be about four or five blocks away, still begging with that fruit jar. And she did that for many days. And we used to joke with her, pick at her. But at the end of the uh, day, the joke was on me and the kids because she wasn't collecting money because she needed it. She was collecting money so when we went off to college, we could pay for our books. So she knocked on the door and gave us a check two days before we was to go. And when I came home from the holidays for Christmas, she had passed on. So I never got properly to thank her. That is why I pay for kids' books, because I need to do it. So those, those are my uh, stories I can win an Oscar for. So <laughs> now let's get to Everything else. Look at all these ass pretty over there. You know, <laughs> just just a punk. Just a big old juicy punk. <laughs> Look at him. Heels up. You got a question, Freddie? You got a question? Well, welcome to prime time is all I can say. <laughs> I hate to tell you. I hate to tell you, but prime time starts at 7 p.m. <laughs> It's like mid day, so day like, see, see, see what I mean? Bring it down. Prime, whack the prime time. Okay. Even if you was in the West Coast, it still would not be prime time. Okay, any more questions? Oh, you got, oh, look at it. I have a mic now. Okay, I have a mic. It almost got cut. You know, I mean, because they were just coming because they wasn't clear. And that was a difficult scene for me. I, I, I was, I was literally, I was really scared about that scene. You know? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. During the phone time movie, you said that that one was uh, scary because you, you, were, you were in fear that you almost got cut. Is there a time that like that you were worried about some of the other actors or even yourself because maybe somebody ended up getting an injury? No. Okay. <laughs> I had to worry about mom, me. Oh, I got you. I didn't say that. <laughs> no. You know, the thing about um, the Dream Warriors, and I know I'm about to get in a little trouble here, 
is because I know there's a lot of horror movies out there and everybody come and say they're family and, and that, and I believe that. But what I do know and believe with the Dream Warriors, with us, what Chuck Russell did as the director, he got us all together before the movie was filmed, about three weeks. We went to uh, a couple of parties, we got to know each other. And that first scene was the scene in the hospital when we were all talking. That was our first scene. We had not met Helga yet. We wanted to meet her. We didn't actually meet Helga until she walked in that room. And so, because he got us together, we broke bread together, was friends, we had an investment in each other when we was doing that scene. And I personally believe that that is the reason that we all were so close and we cared about each other. We, you know, because there was a union there before we walked on the set. A lot of times, you don't know the actor. I just come to the set and I meet you and I say thank you and we do the scene. Well, we got to meet the scene. We got to meet each other. We got to talk to each other. So, um, I forgot what the question was. Uh, uh, just if you were ever worried that somebody else or oh, yourself no, so, was going to get injured. So, so I guess you know. To be honest, yes, I was. We we was worried when certain things, like when he was pulling us through that mirror, and Freddie was pulling us. Um, it was difficult. So we did worry, but we felt safe because there was a stop person there. I had a stunt double. No, I did not jump that high. I only jumped three feet. Three feet. I had a stunt double. Now my dog, that arrogant bitch. I, <laughs> Jason. Oh, I can say this, and I'm not cussing. That was a bitch. That dog. He had two stunt doubles. You know, that was a dog that raised his leg up. That was his only, that was his only job. And you could go and say, oh, hey, he keeps. He could be walking down the street and they said, hey, that's Jason. <laughs> and then there was another dog that did the barking and everything. So that was doubles there for dogs. Nice, okay, all right. Any questions from you guys? Let's talk about your mama that, yes. Well, I'm going to step out of character for a minute. <clears throat> so, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1 and Part 2 were, I feel, a lot darker, and Freddy was a lot more serious. It wasn't really until Part 3 where he started with the puns and the jokes and took a little bit of a lighter spin on Freddy, and he made him, I think, more likable. Some people like the darker, meaner Freddy, but I actually like the fact that he had jokes. He, he was like the king of the one-liners. He was like Arnold and everybody else. Before he made his kill, he, he put a joke out. And you were a big part of that because you were in part three where it all started. Yes. And also, probably as one of the first African-American featured in the Elm Street franchise. Am I right on that? That's right. So that's wait, a big wait, wait. deal. Brother, brother, it's about me and you now. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> about me and you. Over the crowd a okay. Bit. Sorry. Repeat that, would you please? I was oh, loud brother, brother, it's about me and you now, all right? Not bragging. Well, yeah, anyway, the, the film, you know, it, that was a, a milestone, a big step, and... Uh, you could punch nine. <laughs> now, I just wanted to know if the, you know, what made the directors or the writers of Freddy go in that direction and, and make him take on the more comedic role, and as you were one of the funniest... No, he was the funniest guy in part three. I mean, we were shocked when he heard your line. She's like, hey, a real person. That's how I would react. Like, Freddie, you mess with me, you know. And you were just such a relief. We're like, yes, some, that's how I would be if Freddie was chasing after me. I'd be like, oh, dear, run. You were like, stay away from me, Freddie. You, know, you, you just brought some realism to it. I just was wondering what, how the director uh, or the writers came to that decision to make Freddie go in that direction. I don't know if they came in a decision to make him go in that direction. I think some things happened 
is that when you, uh, as an actor, when you're on there, you see that that actor can take it to a place that you wasn't going to take it with creativity. I think if they had used a white actor, that perhaps it would have had a different take. Not that the actor would have been bad, but I think that I had a, a different take. I think people could relate to me because I wasn't trying, I didn't want no crazy, my dream wasn't crazy. My dream was strength. That was something that everybody could relate to. And I get messages all over the world, literally, about Ken Kate and his strength. And Ken Kate could talk trash, fat, you know, he could, but he could talk the mama jokes. He, he, he was a survivor and he was not going to let you take him down without a fight. And I think that's what it was. Also, with the one thing I think about part three and part four, not bragging, they make the most money. Those were the two I was in, but not bragging. <laughs> you know, but part three had some of everything in it. It had mental health in it. It had jokes in it. It had depression in it. It had unity in it. It had what you had to do. It covered everything. It covered civil rights. It covered everything in just a little bit. And I think that was one of the reasons that that movie was so popular. Also, I think it gave homage to the old horror films. You know, I think it touched on something. I think that everybody could relate to something in Nightmare 3. And uh, I'm glad that I was a part of that. You know. Did you improvise any of the, the one-liners or the jokes or anything that was uh, said? Yes, I, I did. But as a writer myself, I, gave, I knew that I had to, I respect another writer's work. But so the director gave me, well, first of all, not the only director, but uh, Wes Craven, the writers, gave me leeway to change it because of when he said that I can write all I want to, but I am not a black person. I can be as creative. So you can give those little nuances in there without taking away what he wrote. And I just, that, hey, Freddie, where you at you, Mark Fay, pussy, you know, and all that. That was a little ad there. You, know. yeah. you have a piece of creativity inside of you. There's a young man here now, I don't want to point him out, but we was talking this morning, and he kept saying, he kept describing something that he thought about. And so I kept saying to him, so you're a writer. Finally he said, yes, I guess I am. So don't get caught up on what is the key to get in. If somebody knew the key to get in the business, they would be richer than rich right now. There is no key. And, and now with this internet, this, what's that, snap dookie, snap, what they got it? Because I don't know how to do snap dookie. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of different oh, okay. uh, that's that's you, can, you can do your own stuff. Do it. Just do it. And don't say, take your child and just make a movie with your child. Put it on the internet. And just, if, you, if, if that's what you want to do, just do it. I mean, some of y'all, now I'm going to say something, y'all you know, going to put it on the thing. You make your porn. You get on there, you film yourself, getting your little, uh, uh. So do it. That's my thing. Do it. Do it. You don't have to go to the library to look up a book now. You can go to the internet. Just do it. Look at you. How you wear that? Ken Sagos can't wear it. I don't want to, but you do it. And, and, and this here, this con, it's wonderful. It's the first con I've been to where I saw a character as the host, and I think that's very creative and wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think, I think it is. Any more questions? Uh, and, and, but horror has no age limit, by the way. It, it has no age limit. I had a lady at a con I was at about a year ago. She was in a wheelchair. I mean, I, 
personally, I think they should have been pushing a hearse behind her, but she was just old. But she came up to me and I was, and I said, how you doing, ma'am? She said, oh, you keep that motherfucker's head all over dreamland. <laughs> because it's how, you know, do it. Remember when you wake up in the morning, that's a blessing. Bless yourself by doing what you want to do. That's it. All right. We have time for a couple more questions. Anybody else out here have questions for them? Because we are not together. But when we come together, fuck Trump. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, you know, the Democrats, the Republicans, come together and we got to realize that this is our country not their country i didn't want to get political up in here but that's what it is we got to come together i thank you for coming to see me it, it is it, it's refreshing i appreciate you and i want to say one thing before i leave as a fan i know all of you come and say we love you and we this here and we that and all this here i am who i am because of you. Not one celebrity in here made it without you. So if one of us disrespect you, cuss their ass out because you have the power. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Kincaid would be just a kick. That's it. I, I, thank you. I, I, I love you. Appreciate it. I'm right over there. All right, thank you. It's, it's so nice to see me in here. Thank you. All right.